Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praise, all honor, and all glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechakodash. Double honors to our apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessing and many salutations unto you elect across the four ones of this earth, fulfilling your lot to all truth and all sincerity. I'm the brother Sha'ar from the Great Millstone Dallas branch, and I'm coming to you all with another lesson through the Spirit. And Lord's willing, this lesson here will be edifying unto the flock. I did a lesson earlier today doing a response to a video that um, a famous scoffer who goes by the name of Vocab Malone. And in the video, what I did was respond to his his breakdown, terrible breakdown at that of Genesis chapter 33, verse 10. Really, he didn't break it down, but he was on a panel with a few different individuals that know that they're Israelites, which their doctrine isn't even all the way there, the ones that he talked to. But he posed the question, Genesis 33 and 10, where it makes mention where our forefather Jacob, after he got done fighting the angel, how he approached his brother Esau. And when he looked at his brother Esau, he likened it as he had looked at the face of God. And in that lesson, in the lesson, I actually went into the exact meaning of that and why Jacob said that. All right. That's not uplifting Esau in any way, form, form or fashion. And this lesson is not even just generally just going into that because I did a lesson going into that. But I do want to say this. You find it funny and you find it ironic how hell bent people like Vocab Malone and other so-called Christians that are out there and how hell bent they are on justifying Esau. Because you look at it before, their argument was, well, Esau died during the Roman Jewish Wars. Esau is done away with. And this was about four or five, maybe even around six years ago. That's what a lot of so-called Christian scholars would say. Because as we came on the scene, the Hebrew Israelites, we really exposed Esau and really went into who Esau is. And this is all inspired by the Spirit of the Lord. It isn't that... We just read pages out of a book and said, Eureka. No, the understanding is being brought from the heavens. And part of us understanding our heritage and knowing who we are, part of that is also understanding who our enemies are too. Okay? As we've been given understanding from the heavens to know our heritage, we've went into the scriptures. We've went and studied the Old Testament, the New Testament, the Apocrypha. And as we study and look at these prophecies, which again, we, we've received this through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. There is one common denominator that's put out there and there is one enemy that the scriptures talks about in the Old Testament and the New Testament. And that is the nation of Esau, Edom. All right. Let me turn these notifications off. That's understanding who Esau, Edom is and understanding his role on the planet Earth, which again, we believe to be the so-called Caucasian race as according to the prophecies and just because I quoted going into how we received our heritage and we've been given understanding and given this understanding has brought us a lot of peace because before we found that we were Israelites we didn't know who we were we were still following this so-called white man's religion that said out here there was no type of rest in our soul no understanding of why but as we've been converted into this knowledge, we understand the end all be all and the latter end. And the latter end is our Lord delivering us from the state of captivity and judging those that had oppressed us and oppressed his heritage. So I'm going to read this here in the book of Jeremiah, the sixth chapter. Leaves in Jeremiah chapter six. Let me see here. All right, so it's in, and it's in the 16th verse. And let's see, I'm going to start at verse 15. It says, Were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? And this is talking about us, our people, the Israelites. As we transgressed and rebelled against our God, the Lord had placed us in the state of captivity. When you read the book of Judges, it happened numerous times. When you read the books of Kings, 
All right, the, well, I'd rather say Second Kings. That's where it happened again. And when you go in segue into the books of Isaiah, Jeremiah, the different prophets, a lot of their testimony was going into the fact that we was going to go into the land of our captivity. And just as it happened then, it also happened as we were sent forth throughout different areas of the earth. The bulk of us being over here in the, the, um, the western hemisphere of the earth, Babylon, America, North America, and even parts of South America. But regardless, as we've been sent over into this land, we have been oppressed from the so-called Negro all the way down to the, to the South American. All the tribes of Israel have been oppressed because the scriptures say that that would take place. And this is also an indicator to show forth that we are the Israelites due to the plight that we've received since the beginning of time all the way to right now. So back in Jer Jeremiah 6 and 15, it says, were they ashamed when they had committed abomination? Nay, they were not at all ashamed neither could they blush therefore they shall fall among them that fall at the time that i visit them they shall cast down say it's they shall be cast down saith the lord and again this is going into the punishment that we've received for rejecting his way now verse 6 uh, verse 16 says this thus saith the lord stand ye in the way and see and ask for the old paths so part of this ministry and being converted in this knowledge is asking for the old paths and the meaning of that is seeking the old way you're going to understand the scriptures you're going to want to know about the history you're going to want to know about your heritage all this comes with understanding the name of yahweh and the name of his beloved son yahweh shai you're going to seek out your heritage in doing that you're going to stumble across or read the laws of moses you're going to read the prophets you're going to read the new testament that way we understand the totality of the scriptures and understand our latter end we find that within the scriptures and understanding that gives us rest all right and as we receive rest and we receive understanding of that the enemies that that took this knowledge away from us that tried to hide who we were are frantic now in the simple fact that we are seeking the old paths you even read about it in sirach another name for it is the book of ecclesiasticus which is in the Apocrypha, the 30th chapter in the third verse, where it goes into how when a father is teaching his son the proper way and the proper ordinances, it's even grievous unto the enemy. So you see, and you even seeing examples about it with Kyrie Irving, Kanye West, as they're speaking about Israel, and really Israel is really being put forth on the forefront in the midst of all these events happening on the earth. World War III, famine taking place, diesel shortages taking place in the midst of that you have israel the name israel being talked about all over the earth and this is not by a mistake this is systematically set up by the lord and as you see all these things being talked about you see the enemies fret you see esau edom fretting in the head of esau edom who is the house of amalek which we call the small hats which are the small hats today you see the state that they're in right now they don't like it they hate it but again, the scripture stands where it says when a man's when a man teacheth his son, it even is grievous unto the enemy. So the simple fact that we're being taught the ways of our fathers, the true ways of our heritage, our enemies that have oppressed us and kept us down, hate it. And that's why they cancel everybody that talks about it. That's why they give you a gag order. They'll even go all the way to the point where they'll set up certain people of us to demonize and talk about people that are speaking truth. But at the end of the day, as I'm reading this here in Jeremiah the sixth chapter, this understanding is giving us rest, knowing who we are, knowing our heritage, and first and foremost, knowing the name of the son that died for us, the nation of Israel, not everybody. So this is back in Jeremiah chapter six, verse 16. And it says, and as for the old paths, where's the good way and walk therein, and ye shall find a rest for your soul. But they said we will not walk therein. And that's going into the mindset of the majority of our people. But there is a small remnant that's out here of the nation of Israel that's really seeking these paths. And as you seek it, there's no tangible dollar you can put to it. There's no carnal thing that you can put to it that's going to surpass this truth, this ministry. This is where the rest is. When you read these scriptures, when you have understanding 
when this truth has been brought unto us, that gave us rest. It no longer was those why moments, what if. No, we have complete understanding on what's getting ready to transpire. Even as is written of in 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, the apostle Paul said, Brethren, I have no need to write to you unto these things, though you already know it. For the day of the Lord cometh at the thief in the night. So these are things that we know and understanding this gives us rest. That's why we ain't tripping for those of us that are actually in the know. For those of us that actually care. Because you also have sell out Israelites just as back then that have sold out their integrity and are willing to bend down unto this beast. And support Esau, Edom and their head house Amalek within all their ways. So I wanted to read that in Jeremiah 6, but namely, this is going into that video with Vocab Malone. And when you listen to his breakdown of Genesis chapter 33, verse 10, you hear how he's justifying Esau. Because he posed the question, well, if Jacob wasn't mad when he saw Esau, y'all are hypocrites because y'all are cussing Esau out every day. So why didn't Jacob cuss him out? Because it wasn't the time for that at that moment. If Jacob would have did that, guess what? His family would have died. And there would have been no Israel to go into the land of Egypt. There would have been no Yahweh who the world calls Jesus. And there wouldn't have been any of that. So this had to happen for prophecy's sake. But you find it ironic and interesting how people like that are quick to justify Esau. Because they know deep down within their bones, with the skin of their teeth, that they are Esau Edom. And now since they see this movement spreading forth the way that it is, these people are terrified. Including Vocab Malone. That's why he's so hell-bent and obsessed on trying to bring down this thing. But he can't bring it down because it is ordained by the Heavenly Father. It's ordained by the Heavenly Father and confirmed by his beloved Son, who the world calls Jesus Christ, whose real name is Yahweh Shai. And as his ministry is being pushed forth and such, these people are in fear. And we can't forget what the Lord said. There's going to be continual war with Amalek. So with them getting mad at people like Kanye and Kyrie and such, and it's going to come to the point where they're going to heavily persecute us as well. That's what the scriptures say. The Lord is going to have war with Amalek from generation to generation. There's no hiding who he is. Matter of fact, I'm going to read that. And this is in the book of Exodus, the 17th chapter. And I'm going to jump straight to the point in verse 13. And it says, And Joshua discomfited Amalek, and his people with the edge of the sword because when you go into this account here in the old testament after we left out of the land of egypt we had war with amalek who was the chief house of the nation of edom and the lord put the spirit of moses to raise his hands up and when his hands was up we would get, become more victorious but when he would put his hands down we would start to lose so you have hor and aaron that actually sat moses down and raised his hands up because it was a long time and his arms was getting weak. And when that was being done, we was winning the war. But going into that, I just wanted to bring that summary or abridge what was taking place. That way you all aren't confused of why I'm starting off from Deuteronomy. I'm sorry, Exodus 17 and 14 and 13. So back in Exodus 17 and 13 says, And Joshua discomfited Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial in a book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And that still stands. Now it didn't happen directly around that time. Neither did it happen in the days of our Lord Yahweh Shai. That's going to take place when we're in our kingdom. But in the midst of that, as is written, there was going to be constantly be war with Amalek. And I'm going to get that. And it says, and Moses built up an altar and called the name of it Yahweh Nasai or Jehovah Nisi. And you got Christians that'll be out there foaming out of the damn mouth, running all over the place saying Jehovah Nisi when they don't even have an idea what that's about. Your certain family members and relatives, and this is when you were younger in the truth, when you had to have conversations about them. I know my mom would say, and we would try to tell her about the truth. No, I worship God, Jehovah Nisi. When they don't even understand what Jehovah Nisi means, when that literally goes into the destruction in the war with Amalek from generation to generation. So they didn't even know why they're saying that. They're condoning the demise of Amalek. 
And that's exactly what Yahweh Nasai means. The despise, I'm sorry, the of demise, excuse me, of Amalek, who is the chief house of Esau Edom, the small hats today. So let's get it. And Moses built an altar and called the name of it Yahweh Nasai. For he said, because Yahweh had sworn that the Lord would have war with Amalek from generation to generation. And this is what the Lord swore. So as much as people can say, well, no, Esau is loved. God loves everybody. Well, no, that's not what the scriptures say, buddy. If people like vocab and Christianity, they're through because their opinions waver all the time. One moment Esau is done away with. There's no more Amalek. The next moment the Lord loves Esau. Which shows you that people like this, his backs are against the ropes. Their backs are against the ropes. And it's only so many lies that Christianity could have went forth to the point where Jacob was going to start getting tired of it. Because Christianity offers no solution to the state that we're in right now. When you look at it, they'll tell you you die and you go to heaven and that's where in the kingdom. So you catching all this hell, got to experience your enemies with a boot over your neck. And then you got to die in order to get to heaven. But in the meantime, they're down here enjoying themselves in wickedness. And you don't ever hear people like Vocab defending, you know, um, going against the small hat. You don't never see him going against a small hat trying to refute that they're not them over there. Because the scriptures clearly say it when you read it in Isaiah, the second chapter, that the next time the Israelites would be over in the Holy Land, there would be no more wars. David's throne would be established. There would be peace on the planet Earth. And as these devils have been over in that land, you have not seen not a lick of that. And as much as these people want to try to study the Old Testament and consider themselves to be scholars now, ever since we came out there and told the truth, not have they once really went into the fact that those people are not the true Israelites. And people like Vocab knows it because I believe he's a small hat myself. He's already been exposed to being a Jesuit already been exposed for what the cia coming over there knocking on his door and stuff he's already been exposed to being a true agent and this is something that he said out of his own mouth but that don't change the fact that the lord has a particular plan for esau and amalek and how there's going to be constant war from generation to generation there's going to be no peace on the earth while esau is in his position of power and that's why the lord is raising this thing of ours up the Lord's son is being exalted. Yahweh Shai is being exalted. And that's through the power of preaching. Breaking down strongholds. And I can end it here in the book of Isaiah. Chapter 25. This is the book of Isaiah. Chapter 25 verse 7. And it says. And he will destroy in this mountain. The face of the covering cast over all the people. And that's exactly what's taking place. All right, in this rulership, because that's what mountains represent, not all the time in the scriptures it'll represent rulership, but there's a lot of scriptures when you actually break it down and extrapolate, mountains represent rulership. That's why when you have the peak of a mountain, it goes by the name of what's called a summit. And when you go into a summit, even when you look up the definition, it goes into an organization or a group of high-ranking individuals discussing the matters of men, controlling the matters of men controlling their subjects so in this verse right here this is going into the governing bodies of this world which again are headed by esau edom and this beast system that we see here in place today and when you read it in isaiah 25 and 7 it's going into how the lord is going to destroy the covering cast or this veil or the lies that have been brought forth and that's exactly what's taking place by ways of this truth by the way of this truth, it's exposing and destroying the lies. And in the midst of all this taking place, these devils are losing their minds. They're going crazy. <laughs> all right. It says in this face, the covering cast of all the people and the veil that is spread over all the nations. So this is going into the lies being exposed. And as the lies are being exposed, you see the wicked tucking tail and afraid. And I, saw, I know I said I'd end it off here in Isaiah 25, but I'll actually end it in the book of Isaiah, the 19th chapter. They can be mad and upset all they want because eventually it's going to come to the point where they're not going to be able to try to destroy it within the videos and everything. But they're going to have to physically come and get us. 
that's where you read it in what second Ezra 16 where it goes into that great insurrection that's going to come against them that fear the Lord it's going to come to the point where they're going to have to physically come and get us as the scriptures say when your enemy shall come past thee as a flood then shall the Lord lift the standard so it's going to have to come to that point where they're going to have to lock us up for this ministry and come up against us physically. It's not going to just be them taking your pages down or exposing you as being anti-Semitic, calling you anti-Semitic. No, it's going to come to the point where they're going to want to lay hands on you. And that's right around the way. So this is the book of Isaiah chapter 19. And I'm going to start at verse 14. And it says, the Lord hath mingled a perverse spirit in the midst thereof. And they have caused Egypt to error or err in every work thereof, as a drunken man staggereth in his vomit. And that precept there is an allegory to modern day Egypt, which is America. Just as you read it in Revelation 11, it goes into the place which is spiritually called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. You can read that in Revelation chapter 11, verse eight. So this isn't, isn't talking about physical Egypt, but the place in the last days that was going to be likened unto Egypt and unto Sodom and Gomorrah. And what was Egypt known for? Having the Hebrew Israelites in slavery, pyramids, and you look in the back of the American dollar, you see a pyramid. And again, that goes into what I said in my last lesson. You have to be able to extrapolate and read between the lines when you read these scriptures. Because that's part of understanding prophecy is understanding the ability to extrapolate what this prophecy means and how that is coming into effect today or how that correlates with today's time. And that's something that nobody else is able to do except those that have been blessed with the Holy Spirit. So let's read down in Isaiah 19 and 15. Neither shall there be any work for Egypt, which the head or tail or branch or rush may do. In that day shall Egypt be like unto woman, and it shall be afraid in fear because of the shaking of the hand of the Lord of hosts, which he shaketh over it. So it's going into the fact that the people that dwell within this land, starting with the higher ups and the elites, how they're going to be in terrible fear. And he likens them being like woman. And that's exactly what you see with vocab and such these frantic rants that they're going on. I mean, when I saw that video he did on Genesis 33 and 10, I laughed. I'm like, yo, these people are, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? They're desperate. But again, the scriptures must stand where it goes into how they have to be like women. And the reason why they're like this and doing this is because of the fear of the shaking of the hand of the Lord of hosts, which represents his rebuke. And his rebuke is being done by the plagues he's sending forth, by these events that are happening. All right, the spirit of these people being brought low due to what the Lord is doing, but also it's due to what the Lord is saying right now. And how is he speaking? By the mouth of his servants, the prophets. By this truth being put out here and exposing them on the utmost bitter. That's why they're like women. And you clearly see it. Because again, as I said earlier, it got to the point where they were saying Esau died off in a Roman Jewish war. So them saying, oh, Esau can make it too. <laughs> you know? So it's beautiful that we're seeing this take place and the times that we're in is beautiful as well hey as the scriptures say in the book of Sirach 25 and 7 happy is the man that seeth the fall of his enemies and those of us that are in the loop are clearly seeing that come to pass and take place today so I'm going to end it off there Lord's willing this was edifying I want to give all praise honor and glory to Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai Bahashem Rechakodash Double honors to our apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessing and many salutations unto you elect across the four winds of this earth, fulfilling your lots in all truth and all sincerity. Shalom.